this is Jack Lifton, and this is the Critical Minerals Institute report. And today I have the pleasure of discussing Avalon Advanced Materials with Don Bubar, the CEO of Avalon Advanced Materials. And Don, I just have one question, or in multiple parts, I guess. Uh, Ontario is, is rapidly on the way to becoming a battery hub for North America. And that, that is the total supply chain, beginning with the raw materials and their processing. And that, I think, is where Avalon is really shining these days. Can, can you tell us what is happening with Avalon Advanced Materials in, in support of, of the project to make Ontario a battery hub for North America? Sure. Well, basically, we recognized quite a while ago that the main challenge in getting these full supply chains established is creating the midstream processing capacity. That's by far the most challenging part and most expensive part of the supply chain. And um, now that there's so much interest in getting the supply chain started, we wanted to basically take advantage of that and um, establish a facility that we could get started, but in a central location in Thunder Bay, where it would be easy to access various markets in the southern part of the, pro of the province and uh, also internationally. So that's all kind of coming together now and um, we'll see how things uh, evolve. But the main reason for establishing it there was also to basically open the door to other producers of um, lithium mineral concentrates from the many, many, many lithium pegmatites that occur throughout Northwestern Ontario and the Canadian Shield generally. So there's, we'll become a buyer of concentrates because as you may have noticed from our news last week, we're gonna have other markets for our lithium mineral product there, the pedalite and glass ceramics applications. What, what, what are you planning to produce at Thunder Bay? What form of lithium? Lithium hydroxide is the one that's in most demand here in uh, North America. And is that also what you would, you would be planning uh, to sell to uh, LG Energy Systems with whom you, you made an, an agreement uh, recently? Yeah, that's what they want too. Yeah. Okay, and uh, you you mentioned petalite from from your I believe that's from your separation rapids property, right? And that's going to be in the ceramics industry. Yeah, high strength glass ceramic products of various types. So that's a market you don't hear a whole lot about for lithium. That is growing now too through further innovation on uh, other types of high strength glass products and ceramic products. And in every case, they always prefer to use a high purity lithium aluminum silicate mineral of which petalite has been the preferred way to introduce it into the um, batch formulation because of its very high purity. Well, it looks to me like Avalon is really at the center of, of, of the developments going on now in Ontario. And now, I don't want to put you on the spot, but how long have you been working on this project? 25 Ever. years. <laughs> <laughs> so so it just turns out that all it takes is just a moment, right, to get things done in the mining industry. That's right. I saw the future 25 years ago, but before <laughs> anyone else did. <laughs> no, that's true, you know, and and... Avalon is a survivor, and now it looks like you, you've reached the golden land. Yeah, finally. <laughs> <laughs> and well, our resource is one that we can recover multiple other byproducts from as well. Mm -hmm. We have another lithium mineral there, lipidolite, that we can also concentrate. And then there's tantalum that can be recovered, rubidium-bearing feldspars and probably cesium can be recovered from the lipidolite. This is all from separation rabbit. Yep. Okay. Um, can you tell us a little about the tantalum that you might be able to produce from, from that one? I, I'm familiar that tantalum is frequently found in conjunction with lithium. Yeah, it is often found in the 
pegmatites like ours, the LCT type that all, always have tantalum and cesium, the most highly fractionated ones and geologically. And um, we'll be able to recover it as a byproduct. And with one last thing with regard to cesium, Canada was the, the world's largest producer of cesium by a long shot when um, Tanco uh, ran their mines in Manitoba and before they sold them to the Chinese. If you, if you should produce cesium again, you'll be the first uh, Canadian producer, the first new Canadian producer, won't you? Yeah. And we are keen to get it started because of our, we have another property we call lily pad. That's a little bit further north near the ring of fire, but um, has exceptional concentrations of the rare cesium mineral polyocyte. So we have a good potential supply source for the future there too. Well, Don, I, I know that you're, you're a survivor and you're a fighter. I've known you a long time. And you always have, you present the same face to the public, no matter what. And I congratulate you on what looks to be your biggest success. Looks like our time has finally come. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's sooner or later. And, and this, this is, I think, is your time. Thank you, Don. Appreciate the, the update. Thank you, Jack.